A very special man here with us today. And Tina, as you just heard, founded the Humanitarian Water and Food Awards. This man was actually the inspiration that led Tina to do that. He has been speaking about peace for over 50 years, starting when he was four years old. And in 2001, he founded the Prem Rawat, Foundation, and it's dedicated to bringing food and water to the poorest people in the world, as well as a message of peace. And his message is that, that there's an inextricable link between peace and everybody having enough food and clean water. The man in question has, had, has won so many awards, it is extraordinary. He's an ambassador for peace, in 2012, he won the Brand Laureate Lifetime Achievement Award. A very, very rare honor. Nelson Mandela, Hillary Clinton, among others, have won that. This man is visionary. He's inspiring. And he's very wise. So I'd love you to give a huge warm welcome to the extraordinary Prem Rawat to receive the very first patronage for the Water and Food Awards. Prem Rawat. So, thank you, and uh, I think there was quite an introduction. <laughs> I don't know if it's all true about being wise and all that, but I must say that there is something very phenomenal about trying to reach out and really recognize those people who want to make a difference. I think, and the word that comes to mind is exceptional pioneers. Those people, because nothing happens in a vacuum. First of all, you have to have a heart that says, do something. Do something for all that that's wrong. All that that is wrong hasn't been there by nature, placed by nature, but by the arrogance and ignorance of human beings. The amount of greed that exists in this world, I don't think there is a gauge scale for it. It's off the scale. And yet, we can try to take challenges that say, well, we should do something about it or to the credit of those people who say, listen, whether that happens or not, people are suffering and let's do something about it. To see, to focus, to recognize, and to exhibit exceptional pioneer, to be an exceptional pioneer, to make a difference in this world. When this planet suffers, we are all going to suffer. 
we cannot afford to cut the same branch we are sitting on. And this is what is happening. And it keeps happening again and again and again. I invite every single human being on the face of this earth to participate, whoever you are, to participate in helping to bring peace on this earth. I invite every single human being to participate, to alleviate each other's misery of the basic items that we need. This is about living human beings, living for the living planet, taking from the living planet what it wants to offer us, not by force making sure that this living planet heals so that it can go on to abundantly give till it can. It is being the gardener. It is being the gardener. And this is what we have to be. Peace will always be an important factor. Generosity will always be an important factor. And knowledge will be always an important factor because knowledge is the only thing that can remove the stupid ignorance. So not blaming, but taking action, having this opportunity in our lives, and being a part of this incredibly noble cause. So I applaud all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fran. Wonderful, wonderful. So, to those of you, for those of you who are here this afternoon, you will all know who our winner is. But Prem, if you could kindly formally open the envelope and read out who that is, please. Suspense. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't be. <laughs> The final winner, Zimbabwe African Center for Holistic Management. Precious Piri, Precious Piri and Huggins Mataga. I would like to now give this very special award. This was specifically made, designed, this sculpture, by Mons Mula for Water and Food Awards. This is an exceptional piece. It represents, I believe, a vessel that can hold food, that can hold water. And I really hope that with this award, it signifies a part of our hearts that wants to give to those who so bravely have been doing what they have been doing, and it gives them the inspiration to continue doing so. In our lives, we get so caught up in symbology. Push the button, do this, ring the bell, light the candle, you're done. You're good. But that's not how life is. Life is not a concept. Life is not somebody's idea, it's something real. And to illustrate this, 
There's a wonderful analogy that came to my mind. You've all heard of King Solomon, and in fact, I'm sure you've all heard this story. But I'm going to tell you this again tonight. And the story, and I'm paraphrasing, but the way the story goes is that once in the court of King Solomon, who was a very wise ruler, wise king, two women came with a baby, claiming that the baby was theirs. One said, that baby is mine. The other one said, no, that baby is mine. And after hearing all the bickering between the two, King Solomon said, bring a sword. One of them asked, why? He said, well, it's easy. It's obvious you both want the baby. So what we're going to do is just split the baby in half. Give one half to you and one half to you, and that should do it. They both stayed very quiet. The sword was brought. As soon as the sword was lifted, one of them said, wait, wait, stop. Let her have the baby. Let her have the baby. Don't kill it. Don't split it. Let her have the baby. King Solomon put the sword down and said, give her the baby. That's, this baby belongs to her, not to her. Now, what's the point of the story? For the real mother, there were no options. Have half a baby, have a quarter of a baby. No. Because she truly was a mother, it was in her interest that her baby lives. That that baby is alive. That's what mothering is all about. And when this condition was put, and she saw that this was going to become real, she said, it's okay. I'd rather that this baby live on, even with her, than be dead. Life, my friends, has no options. You have it. You are alive. It's afoot. It's happening. And you know who demands peace? Do you know what demands peace? Me? No. Some book? No. Some frog somewhere? No. Some tribe in the middle of Africa? No. I'll tell you what demands peace. What demands peace is life itself. And therefore, you have to have peace the whole time you are alive. That's what it means to be alive to be understanding those requests, to be understanding what does this life really need? Who am I? What do I really need? 
What are the components? What are my necessities? What are those things without which no matter how complete I try to feel, I feel incomplete? We think we have options. Oh yes, I want to be like this. I want to be like this. I want to do this. This is cool. This is this. This is this. This is this. This is these. In fact, all those are options. There are people who are into, completely into bungee jumping. Not me. <laughs> there are people who love to go and dive out of airplanes. Perfectly good airplane. <laughs> you couldn't ask me nicely or otherwise to jump out of an airplane. It's not in me. It, it's just not in me. I'm a, I'm a pilot. I have flown all the way to 51,000 feet in an airplane and I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> I don't like heights. These things are options. What is not an option for life is to feel complete, is to feel joy, is to feel clarity, is to understand, to understand what is this amazing thing called life. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've been doing this since I was four years old. I shouldn't be doing that. People should already know. Because if we could be in touch with this magic called life, then we would know what life demands. And it is indeed life demands peace. That's when it can dance. That's when it can flourish. That's when it can be. That's when it can expand. That's when it can encompass. That's when it can be fulfilling. You are human. Congratulations. You are human. And... The finest accomplishment of a human being will be peace on earth. Do you recognize your world? And do you know that you are the sovereign king and the emperor of this world? You are the sovereign king and the emperor of this world. Your Royal Highness <laughs> How is your world? In your world Do your citizens give thanks? In your world, do your citizens 
live without fear? In your world, are your citizens content? In your world, do people prosper? In your world, in your kingdom, are people happy? Every day. Your Royal Highness. Who are your citizens? The citizens are the moments that come, that live, that move on, that need to be in contentment, in joy. Are they? Or like just any other kingdom. They lay waste, unattended, unheeded, dying of starvation because the king doesn't care. The king, so wrapped up, his own little ideas, trying to make sense out of nonsense. Or is the king benevolent enough to care? To care about this kingdom? Which one? Which one? And that, Your Royal Highness, is the choice you have. You can be the most benevolent ruler, just and kind, clear, simple, and rule, and to rule. This is a kingdom. This is a foot. This is happening. And that the peace that you want, and how important is it to have peace in your empire? How important is it to have peace? Only you can make that decision. Prosperity, very important. Dignity, very important, and peace, very important. Do you rule with uncertainty or do you rule with certainty? Do you have strength or are you weak? Then, this is what I'd like to tell you. You have a strength in you that cannot be fathomed, that cannot be measured. You do. Don't save it for a bad day. God, you crazy? Bring it out now. On a good day. That's the best day to bring out that strength. Make it shine. No, it works. People go, yeah, well, I'll just save my strength for a really bad day because then I'll need it. Do 
Don't check your flashlight in the middle of the storm. It's a bad idea. <laughs> check for it before the storm comes. Will the storm come? Of course the storm will come. Of course the storm will come. But you can't afford to get decimated. You can't afford it. Excuse me, you can't afford it. You can't afford that. The storm will come. Ah, how it'll come, nobody knows. But it'll come. And you cannot afford to be decimated when the storm comes. I'm not here to tell you, oh yeah, you know, you don't have this, you don't have this, you don't have this. Take this course or take this course or read my this book and read my that book and you know, this will help you do this. And it's, this is not a dieting program. <laughs> it isn't. This is about have a feast. But before you do, Deserve it. Deserve it. Your Royal Highness. Deserve it. Have ruled well. And each one of your citizens, those moments will give you a gift. And it will be a gift unparalleled. It will be the gift of joy. It will be the gift of recognition. It will be the gift of understanding because you have ruled well. And when that day comes, that you have to go, <laughs> go with pride, not uncertainty, go with pride. Thank you for tuning in to Macroview Television and welcome to a brand new edition of Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents the different faces and lets you hear the different voices on Taiwan. I'm your host, Ray Guo. On today's program, we're delighted to have a very special guest, and he is an internationally respected speaker and also recognized as an international ambassador of peace, and he is Mr. Prem Rawat. And welcome to the program, Mr. Rawat. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. And uh, as I stated at the beginning of the program, Mr. Rawat, you generally recognize as a highly respected international speaker. And uh, the subject that you speak to audiences around the world is regarding peace. And we're going to start off the program today by asking you a very fundamental question. What is peace and what does it mean to you? Well, it's very important to understand what is peace. Yes. And it, I would rather that it is my message that is more important than I am. Mm -hmm. But in today's culture, we look at all the problems mm -hmm. and we say, well, we've got this problem, and so how do we solve this problem? But okay. we're not dealing with the reality, we're dealing with symptoms. All right. And because there is a lack of peace, or even to say for the pure discussion. There is lack of something that is causing all these problems around the world. Okay. We have wars. We have just a disconnect of one human being from another human being, mm. where people are not caring about each other. I mean, when you fundamentally look at it, that is so anti-life. Mm. At least one species would care about the yes. other one, yes. you know, just to help each other, if mm. nothing else. Right. So then the question becomes, well, what is missing? What is the problem? Okay. You know, we have all the symptoms, and so we're trying to deal with, okay, well, let's take care of this symptom, let's take care of this symptom. All right. But fundamentally, what is the issue? And when you start looking at the fundamentals, you realize the fundamental issue mm -hmm. is that we are not in contact with ourselves. All right. So being in contact with ourselves, being mm -hmm. in touch with our own selves, mm -hmm brings about that simple feeling. Mm. It's called the feeling of peace. Okay. 
Okay, but there are people watching our program right now that Mr. Rawa, people will ask, how would I know if I am at personal peace with myself? You know, if I know this is the position I'm, you know, now, then I would know how to get there, like you said. Mm. But how would I know? This is a very good question. Yes. This is a very good question. Yes. Because in our world, yeah. everything becomes a piece of paper. Mm. Everything. Now you are qualified. Mm. So somebody hands you a piece of paper and says, now you know what you need to know. Yes. Do you ever ask yourself, do mm. I really know what I need to know? Mm, of course. And this is what being in touch with yourself becomes. Yes. To say, do I feel mm. in peace? Not that somebody has come along and said, yes, you have taken a six-month course. <laughs> okay. Not that you have done this, you have done this, you have visited this holy place, you have been with you know, this holy person, and so therefore now you must be in peace. No. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like eating food. Okay. When you eat food, Mm. Who tells you your hunger is gone? Yourself. You do. Mm -hmm. And that's how you need to be in touch with yourself. Okay. That you tell, not waiting for somebody. This is my seventh plate. Am I full yet? <laughs> you know, you can't have this in this world. No. But this is what we have become. Mm. Somebody comes along and tells us, uh, you have had enough. Okay. Somebody says, no, you haven't had enough. Please order more. Please mm. do this. Please mm. do that. All right. That is leaving behind you. Okay. You know, in the studio and in front of the TV, you know, for the audiences around the world, being listening to you on the program today. And uh, we may say that, you know, Mr. Rawa, we, we have problems, you know, whether it's with, you know, work, you know, with family, with friends or whatever. But, you know, we are unhappy, you know. And uh, if I may have three minutes, of your time, Mr. Rawa, what would you say to me to let me discover my inner strength? You know, you know, different, you know, things that, you know, I have, but I don't know that I have, and try to, you know, discover and maintain my personal happiness. Very simply, okay. know yourself. Okay. Yes, you have problems, yes. but you have an inner strength. Yes, you have doubts, but you have clarity inside of you. Yes, you have problems, but you also have the solutions. Mm. All that you are looking for. You see, you have not discovered your strength. You have discovered all your shortcomings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you kept going to the mirror and mm. closing your eyes. Okay. And you kept imagining what the mirror would show. Okay. Now. Open your eyes and look at the mirror. The picture is not that bad. No. It's in fact wonderful. It mm. is beautiful. Mm. I mean, of all things that you could be awarded, okay. you have been awarded life. Mm. You are alive. Okay. You know, uh -huh. there's a little story that I give. There Please. was a there was mm. an old man mm -hmm. who was walking down with a huge load of wood on okay. his shoulders, yes. and he was crouched over. A young man went over to him and said, old man, you have lived for a long time. What advice do you have for me? Yes. Kind of like what the question yeah, you yeah. asked. Yes. <laughs> and the old man looked at him, the young man, took the load, put it down, mm -hmm. stood up straight. And said? Said nothing. Really? And then took the load, put it back, crouched over, and kept walking. We carry the load in the back of our own selves. Okay. We are not looking at the obvious. Mm. The obvious that you are alive today. Okay. Do you know how to celebrate? Yes, people go the party. Party. Of life. Yes. Celebrate life. Okay. Your life, your existence, your being. Mm. And you will see that when you start celebrating uh -huh. your life, your existence, that you will see a whole another door open up. Okay. The door not to the outside, but the door to the inside. Terrific. And when you see it, mm -hmm. then you will understand in an instant why oh. Socrates said, know thyself. Yeah. Okay. 
It's certainly been a pleasure and an honor to have you on the program today, Mr. Rawa. I want to wish you and the foundation all the best in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you and to your audience. Thank yeah, you. those are very exciting 48 minutes today on the program. Thank, thank you. you. I see three things, and I know there are three things. There is yesterday, and that yesterday represents our past. And then there is tomorrow, and that tomorrow represents our future. And then there is this mysterious thing called today, which a lot of people talk about, but there seems to be no understanding about today. Today is just left to just, yeah, let's talk about it. There are people who are afraid of their past. Afraid. Fear. Now you must understand one thing. There's many levels of fear. Fear is like a fever. If you have a lot of it, it'll cripple you. But you can have a low-grade fever, which allows you to kind of function, but you're not yourself. It's just like, yes, you can drive. Yes, you can talk on the phone. Yes, you can go to your job. Yes, you can kind of try to eat something. But it's just there, it just like hums away, low-grade fever. And same thing, low-grade fear. It's just there. Then, there are people who have a low-grade fear of the future. It's low-grade. Doesn't really, eat. I mean, after a little while, you just kind of get used to it. But it's like, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I really don't want I love the past. I just adore the past. The past was wonderful. I was young. I was alive. I would do things. We would, I mean, we would stay up all night. We would do this. We would do this. We would do. They want to live in the past because there is a low-grade fear thing happening about the future. I don't know what future will bring. Might be nasty. Might be bad. So there's a group of people, they're afraid of the past. There's a group of people who are afraid of the future. But Almost everyone is afraid of today. Don't understand it. Don't understand what today is. What is today? Then let me tell you what today is. Today is a mirror. Today is a mirror which will reflect perfectly you. And no one else. Just you. This is your today. He has his own today. She has her own today. He has his own today. Each human being on the face of this earth has their own today. And that today is a perfect mirror. And it will not just reflect your face. 
And it will not just reflect your suit, and it won't just reflect your tie, and it won't just reflect your shirt, but it will reflect everything about you. It will reflect your confusion. It will reflect your uncertainty. It will reflect your doubt. It will reflect your anger. It will reflect your fear. And if you understood that, if you understood that, it will reflect your kindness. It will reflect your knowledge. It will reflect your understanding and it will reflect your peace. And it will reflect your joy and it will reflect your gratitude and it will reflect your beauty. It's a powerful mirror. So, what do you want to see today? What do you want to see today? What do you want to know today? What do you want to understand today? How do you want to be today? But don't be afraid of today. And here's why. Because that's all you have is today. And when you open your eyes and see today in its reality, in front of that mirror, looking through the eyes of a child, you will see the real you. And the real you is so beautiful that there are no words to describe the inner beauty, the inner joy, the inner reality. And this only gets reflected in the day called today, in that mirror. I saw a little saying on my refrigerator. I didn't put it there. Every day is a gift. That's why it is called a present. So, you know, there's a cartoon, famous cartoon. Is they, they use that in there too. But then I looked at it. And I said to myself that the biggest present, this is a take on words, the biggest present in the present, the biggest present, the gift, in the present now <laughs> is the presence. <laughs> if you understand what that means, the present, the present, and the presence. That 
which can help you get in touch with the presence that is in the present present <laughs> is then the biggest present that you can have in this present moment. The biggest. What am I talking about? We don't even understand the present is the present. Forget about the presence. We have a hard time figuring out. There's a lot of people. Eh? What is this? Eh? Eh? eh I, I don't have time for this. Present. What present? It's not a present. I am the master of my destiny. <laughs> you are right. You are right. Except for one. The coming and going of the breath is not under your control. It's not. <laughs> when you take your last, you wish it wasn't. You came, and every day of your life, a gift was given to you. You didn't ask for it. You didn't push a button for it. But in abundance of the most precious thing there is on this planet Earth, this gift was given to you. Even if you did not accept it, the gift was given to you. The people say, but I don't feel so. Then my dear, 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 dear friend, remove the veil that stops you from seeing it. Because that is the reality. The veil is not the reality. It is what is beyond the veil that is the reality. Whatever it is, because what I say to you is true. You are the most gifted. It's about life. It's about today. It's about life and living and living and, and not fearing. Not fear. But living and living and living and living and living. And the day... How will you know you have perfected what I just talked about? When, when you begin, when you live that one day that is so full of gratitude, kindness, peace, joy that you could live that day for the rest of your life. You've got it.
the rest of your life. The focus is not on life, my friends. It's not on life. It's all the things that happen in life. And if there was a person driving you in a car, going, oh, look at that. Oh, my God, did you see that? And did you see that? What advice would you give this person? <laughs> hey, please, just, just you focus on driving, OK? But when you are not focused on life and focused on everything else that is happening because of life, you are bound for a wreck. Is that wisdom? No. It's common sense. <laughs> In aviation, they say, fly the plane. Forget about the rest of it. Just fly the plane. Make sure you don't get this thing upside down and buried into the ground. Because you're in it. And this common sense goes right out the window when it comes to life. Oh, but this happened in my life. And oh, this is happening in my life. I understand. I mean, things are painful are painful. But even in that pain, there is a fact. And that fact, my friends, is a lit candle in incredible darkness, in incredible pain and suffering which is darkness. If there is anything that can be defined as darkness, that's it. Even then, there is a beautiful candle that is lit. And it is a beautiful thing. Even in that, you have not been abandoned. You have not been abandoned. You have not been abandoned. Go. Move. 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 Even in that incredible darkness to find that little light. That little light that can illuminate, show me, show me, show me what is real, show me, call of my heart, I want to hear. This is what these eyes thirst for. This is what I want to hear. Maybe there is a thousand problems. A thousand problems. This comes from experience. Maybe there is a thousand problems. <laughs> and all have decided to strike you at the same exact time. exactly at the same exact time. And there is nothing but bewilderment. Nothing but to know, will I be okay in the next moment? 
and hope. The power of hope is only being used to survive. Will I be okay tomorrow? Will I be okay in an hour? I mean, when, this is a full-on storm. And then, in that screaming storm, screaming, peltering storm, to hear one faint little voice. that says, but all you want is to be content. All you want is to be in peace. All you want is to be in joy. And it is nothing shy of a miracle. All of a sudden, I am not looking for a thousand answers. All of a sudden, I am not looking for a thousand solutions. All of a sudden, I know all I need is that peace inside of me. Because I am a human being. This is the nature of a human being. This is the nature. This is who you are. And when that is being manifested, when that is happening, it's a symphony. It's a symphony, and nobody needs to remind me, smile. I can do that on my own. I can do that on my own. Because I have found simplicity. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm not here to tell you I have solutions to your problems. I don't. I don't. But I know a place where there is a lamp. It's lit. And any time it gets dark, you don't have to try to create a sun. A tiny lamp will do the job in you. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Good God. That's how simple it is. That I carry, yet you carry in you all the clarity you will ever need. You carry in, it, in you all the hate you will ever need. And you carry in you all the joy you will ever need. Do you know that? To know. To know. The self. To know others. To know others could be considered wisdom. You're a wise person. But to know the self is enlightenment. That's what it is. Enlightenment. The bulb is
प्लीज वटेवर यू डू वट एवर यू डू वट एवर यू डिसाइड टू डू इन योर लाइफ इज ऑफ कोर्स ऑफ सब टू यू टर्न ऑन द बाउ टर्न ऑन